Thank you for listening to Scandinavian Crimes Podcast. Be sure to check out the episode links and be part of our other social media platforms where you can leave a topic suggestion or even share some of your insights regarding the subject matter of the episode. We will always do our best to provide a well-researched episode, but sometimes due to limited access to information and translation issues, some information can be lost. It is therefore good to do your own research and get a deeper understanding of a case of your own interest. So with that all said, let us start today's episode. Welcome to Scandinavian Crimes. My name is Devante, and I would love for you to say hello to my lovely co-host, Delilah. Hello, everyone. You can do better than that. <laughs> hello, everyone. <laughs> there we go. And on this podcast, we will cover famous Scandinavian criminals who made their mark throughout Scandinavian history. So, for today's story or topic, we are going to be talking about John Wolfgang Alexander Asonius, better known as the Laser Man. And in Swedish, I think he's called the the Laser Manin. Um, <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. That's, that's how it looks to me. Lost but, man then. You know. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, but like, it was, I, it, it, you were right. You just said it with a heavy thick american accent right there but it's fine it's completely well excuse me americans don't have accents because we're we're always the first player i'm joking (laughs) oh my god ew i'm gonna throw up i said don't you ever forget it but uh just you guys just think you're important sorry 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 okay continue yes we are important so but (laughs) this guy He was a Swedish far-right extremist convicted of murder and bank robberies. Between August 1999 and January 1992, um, he pretty much shot and injured 11 people, all of which who were immigrants. What makes this more interesting is this is a story of how self-hate can turn into something truly evil. So today, we are covering the notorious killer, John Wolfgang Osonius, a.k.a. The Laser Man. Osonius was born Wolfgang Alexander Zog in... Come on, you're going to have to correct me on this one because I don't know how to say that one. Leading up. <laughs> yeah, which is in northeast of Stockholm, Sweden. He is the son of a Swiss father and a German mother, both of whom had immigrated to Sweden. He grew up in Vällingby, a working class suburb of Stockholm. According to newspaper reports, he was bullied as a child because of his non-Swedish background, which manifested in him being teased for having black hair and brown eyes. As an adult, he bleached his hair blonde, used blue contacts and legally changed his name. Initially, he changed his name to John Wolfgang Alexander Stannerman, but later to John Wolfgang Alexander Asonius. He went to German school in Stockholm, a private school, but dropped out before graduating. He later completed his secondary school education in an adult education program. Asonius was accepted into the Royal Institute of Technology, but dropped out after a couple of years of unsuccessful study. In 1986, following the Olaf Palme assassination, I probably butchered that as well, so you can correct me if I did. No, I think you did pretty okay. I mean, you said it in American English, but I think it's fine. Then named John Stanneman was one of the police's initial suspects. However, Stanneman could not be linked to the murder as he was incarcerated at the time, serving a sentence of multiple counts of assault. In prison, he became an acquaintance to... You want me to say it? Yes. Uh, the thing is, this is not Swedish, but okay. Myro Barisic or Maro Barisic. <laughs> Barisic. Barisic. <laughs> this is not Swedish. This is like Kratia. I don't know. Well, I got you. Case, please. He became an acquaintance. I'm just going to say Myro. He became an acquaintance of Myro, a member of the Croatian National Fascist Movement. Myro was imprisoned for the 1971 murder of Vladimir, the Yugoslav ambassador of, to Sweden. I know I butchered that, so I know internally you're probably like trying to correct me. No, this is like, I, I don't know these languages. I only know like Swedish. So it's like, I, I can't, I can't correct you on those. <laughs> <laughs> and besides, it's just that it's okay to not say them correctly. 
Estonians developed a hatred for communists, social democrats, and immigrants while graving an ambition of gaining wealth. He worked a low-paying job as a taxi driver but later started trading stocks and bond. His talent for the market quickly earned him a fairly large fortune, resulting in him adopting the yuppie lifestyle. And for those of you who don't know what the yuppie lifestyle is, it's basically a young urban professional, someone who is young, hip, and you know financially successful. By the late 1980s, he owned a luxurious apartment, a Toyota Supra, rather than owning a Porsche, which many other yuppies drove at the time as he despised the company, and a mobile phone before the 1990s, which such a device was seen as a luxury item and usually associated with the jet set lifestyle. However, poorly chosen investments depleted his fortune. This was further aggravated by an addiction to gambling. As a result of the latter, during the trip to Germany, he found himself in dire economic circumstances. With funds running out, Asonius turned to bank robbing to maintain his lifestyle. He performed more than 18 robberies, largely in identical fashion. In 1979, Estonius became a Swedish citizen. He had a strong hatred for immigrants and foreigners. These beliefs led him to start looking for immigrant criminals to kill. Eventually, he was tired of this and decided to simply kill any immigrant. He hoped that this way he would scare all immigrants out of Sweden. Between 1981 and 1982, Estonius served in the Swedish army and thus learned how to use weapons. However, his personal weapons were of poor quality, very likely because Asonius had modified them. He sawed off the barrel and the stock of this first rifle to make it shorter, and he lifted the Smith & Wesson revolver with the silencer. This modification had been made the key of his failure in killing most of his victims as it deviated from the bullet's trajectory and consequently caused him to miss his victims. It was done very amateur-like. The police started a massive manhunt, second in size, only to the hunt of... Olof Palme. On June 12, 1992, during a bank robbery, Asonius was arrested. He later assaulted his own lawyer in court and spent the rest of his trial in handcuffs. He was convicted of murder and robbery, but could not be linked to all the shootings, although he confessed to them all in 2000. He was sentenced to life imprisonment and was later incarcerated at Kumla Prison. In June 2012, he was transferred to Esteroke Prison. Asonius had applied to have his life sentence commuted to an arranged term on three occasions as 2008, 2010, and 2012. The court has rejected his application on all occasions, and on November 2nd, 2012, his third appeal was rejected by Örebro District Court on all three occasions. The National Board of Forensic Medication determined that there was a risk that Asonius would re-offend due to his autism and personality disorder, which the court took into consideration when making its decision. In 2016, Asonius was extradited to Germany to face trial for the 23rd of February 1992 murder in Frankfurt of Blanca Zmigrod, a 68-year-old Holocaust survivor. While investigating, German police looked into ties of far-right terror group National Socialist Underground. On the 21st of February in 2018, he was found guilty and sentenced to life imprisonment in Germany. Oh, it's a journey. In Germany, prosecutors had charged him with stealing her handbag after killing her because he thought she had taken an electronic device that he used to save his bank account numbers. So what we have here, now that this story is kind of out of control, but also just a general senses of who he was as a person, these are the names of some of his victims. And like we mentioned in the story, his aim was absolutely due to water. So these are just a few of the people. Well, these are, I think, all the people, actually, I think, um, whom he shot and attempted to kill. And I'm going to have my lovely co-host uh, say the names. So the first victim was David Gibramariam, uh, he, and the second one was Sharam Kosarafi, uh, and the third one is Dimitrios Karamalekos, and the fourth one is called Heberson Vieira da Costa, and the fifth one is Jimmy Ranjbar. And then he took like a break in between, like he did, like um, he took a break in between and went to the states, and gambled, and stuff. And then he came back to Sweden and killed some more. And he killed Eric Bonkam Rudolf, uh, and then Charles 
the Clama. Oh, I said that wrong. <laughs> Charles La Kama and Isa Aibar and Hassan Zatara. But those are all of his victims, the first half being all shot as an attempted murder in 1991. And the second half, after he came back to Sweden, all took place in 1992. And what's even scarier is in 1992, all of them took place within the same month with only a few days difference, while the first half was more spread out over the course of the year, but still within the single year. So you can tell like he was a man on a mission. But in general, this is like this is what happens when self-hatred of yourself goes unchecked, you know, unmedicated. With a combination of autism and a personality disorder, you get people like this who were not in healthy environments, who were not able to uh, properly scave off the internal thoughts of, you know, what's going on in his head. It's just it, it's crazy because like as, as much as you want to hate him, it's kind of like you have to feel bad for him a little bit. Because this this wasn't done strictly like it, it it was done out of malice for sure, but in reality, this all stems from that little boy who got bullied and turned into this monster because of evil bad little kids telling him like oh you should be here and like and it's really frustrating because stuff like this still exists today people still do this today and you know. To, to be honest, no one is from anywhere <laughs> by definition. You know, all of us immigrated, came from somewhere. You know, as much as people like to think they're purists, like, oh, I'm from here. That's not the case for 90% of the globe, honestly. Um, most of the people who are native to those areas killed off most of the time or enslaved or, you know, it's just so it's so crazy. He turned into this because of other people's evil deeds. And yet it seems like history seems to always repeat itself. We're still, at least in the U.S. for sure, about half the school shooters, you know, preach this rhetoric of, you know, I don't like immigrants, but, you know, every, pretty much all school shooters are white. None of them were born here, <laughs> at least, you know, and yeah. ethnically they, they come from somewhere else. But yet they're saying that they're they're but they belong here. But, you know, that that's just we can. Uh, it gets frustrating hearing stuff like this, especially coming from a black man. It's just like, why, 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 why bully someone into becoming this monster? And then this is literally a product of, you know, prejudice. This is this is literally what it turns into unchecked. But, you know, let, let me, you know, I know you got like a ton to say about something like this. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to like talk about a little bit on him. He, this is actually a very famous um incident or crime that was very well known throughout whole the whole country and it's still talked about today because it still lingers today and um it's uh it's disturbing that it happened and, and also that he himself started off being bullied and it started off with this self-hate but he was also um trying to go back to the education trying to better himself and then he suddenly went back to not do that and then he tried to better his life again by doing trades and like getting rich and stuff and then he goes back to addictional behaviors of gambling it's like it feels like he was trying and then he just kept going back to bad behaviors but not only that it's like it feels like it started with the bullying and then continued be that he got violent and yeah in some way abused or used his violence and aggression and took it towards other people and then he got to jail and met like these fascists and there which in that like that environment I kind of led him towards this hate not only for himself but also to other immigrants and it's sad because people 
got hurt. Luckily, there weren't that many who died, but there were many who got injured, and it surely scared many immigrants who were in Sweden at that time, but also today. And he was the key to start like he was a, basically a symbol and many people and there were other people who joined that as well and started to um you know join that fascist and very right extremist thinking um so it's it's um this this case is it's scary because it's a thing that still is going on until today uh, and also um, not only like not in Sweden per se only but in the whole world and I think also it's important to understand that we are all people and also everyone is in some way immigrants um, if you look through history and I think that you shouldn't judge or hate or blame others I think everyone should look within themselves because if he did he could have probably started to love himself and not take out his aggression and probably get some help as well I mean I don't understand it but <clears throat> I'm not going to be completely mad at him because despite everything he's done I like perceive like at least the child version of him as a victim and I say this to people who you know oh for sure like no, don't get me wrong like it's 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 his it's his fault like it he will he did not try to better himself or love himself like that is something that he chose to take out his aggression on others so it doesn't change the fact that he did something bad and he's a bad guy yeah like he's even though like he's definitely a like someone who no matter what like you said it, everything is a choice like the yep. only part the only part of him i can sympathize with is the childhood version of him who was bullied i've personally never been bullied but you know i can still sympathize that you know when you're trying to figure yourself out and then everyone around you is telling you you don't belong here and this is this is just a general message for people like you have no idea how different races have contributed to what you know society is today you just you're looking at a very skewed perspective and you think like, oh, you don't belong here. You, you shouldn't be doing this. But in reality, a lot of stuff came from minorities, from black people alone. You know, we invented potato chips. We created the gas mags, uh, mask. We helped create blood banks. You know, we created traffic lights. We made refrigerated trucks. You know, uh, we made the what was it? The electric microphone the automatic gear shift like a lot of stuff we are responsible for that and it was erased from history from history and everything but then yeah. you think one group of person is better than the other when in reality everybody has helped contribute to make the society that you love so much the the cell phones in your hand the microchips that power your computers your cell phones your apple watches all that stuff is a byproduct of a bunch of minorities, immigrants working together to help give you I better technology. I can say technology. this, like the ones that got shot, some of them were actually university students. And one of them was mm -hmm. actually a PhD student who was well known and was a representative in like the inter uh, in several international scientific networks. So it's like there were a lot of people who like it could who had like who was trying to have a better life or like trying to have education to like pursue something or change or make it like you know make something of themselves basically and get a career in that field that they want to study and they never got the chance probably properly because they got some of them died and some of them survived so because like you could still be like you could still be successful as even though if you don't go to university and stuff i just wanted to say that because of what you said that there were a lot of people like a lot of inventions and stuff that was made by black people but it got erased for example 
And that would just draw that line that though there were students or minds that were bright that they wanted to, like, they couldn't even have the chance to even do anything because they got shot or got dead or, or got killed. Um, that was that was the parallel that I wanted to just say, but it it sounded like it sounded more that I wanted like it sounded like you can't be successful without education, but that's not what I wanted to point out. No, I get I get it. I will I will piggyback off that and I will say, you know, if by some chance you run across this podcast and you feel like you're someone who's like far right and you feel like anyone who doesn't look like you isn't worthy of your time. I want you to consider look within yourself, look within yourself, number one, and then two, look at the world around you. The very tools when you go to a hospital that save your life made by immigrants, the very tools food. that you need to keep your food in your refrigerator perfectly preserved, made by immigrants, made by minorities. So before you start spewing something at someone because you think they don't belong somewhere, keep in mind your way of life was provided by them alcohol as well the process the process of how like, yeast and like that everything like how that is it's it's from i think it was from egypt or something so or, fermentation there you go alcohol and the fermentation. fermentation thing yeah so the concept yeah. of even really succulent juicy wine but e- either way <laughs> look at <laughs> the world around you before you start to you know think anything of anyone else and then look at yourself Now, you can either do one of two things. You can help contribute. Let's make this world a better place. Let's all love each other, treat each other with respect. And, you know, and let's just make this world the utopia that it has the potential to be. Or you can keep going down that path and you can stay ignorant and live the rest of your life. And stay mad and angry. Yeah, just shorten your life and be mad. Because you're going to be bitter and angry all the time, yeah. So go ahead. You can. Your the choice is absolutely yours, and you know that that's. There's, I can't tell you what to do. That's something. That's a journey you're gonna have to take yourself. So, after hearing this entire story, I hope that you guys at least understand and enjoy the story that you've heard today in some way, shape, or form. Hopefully, you pulled something out of it, and hopefully, we will catch you in the next one next one yeah we'll catch you i just want to say one thing as well like we are all people we all going through things but don't judge based on the outside like base like you can't base it on the outside you have to like we all we are all human we're all different but we are also like going through stuff like every other like human in the world so don't like judge and blame based on how you look like or because it's foreign to you if you are worried about it or like if you are worried about that try to educate yourself learn about the culture so you don't feel as it's foreign for you i guess i'll instead of ending it on like this super positive note of bacon or something i'm going to end it on this since it's a very you know interesting episode today i said we are all different And that is what makes us the same. Remember that. Mm. And, uh, you know, be sure to stick around next week for the new episode. Like I said, we're going to have some nice, interesting things for you. And I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you learned something. And uh, I will see you in the next one. (laughs) Bye. Bye, everyone.